Back in the 80s, RPGs were a serious business. Indeed, there was little in the way of graphics, not much in the way of gameplay outside of classic Dungeons and Dragons inspired mechanics, and most often a logbook that you had to keep close since all the major events in the game were written there. So, am I saying that Scald against the Black Priory as a true homage to these glorious days of yore requires that you keep a pen and paper with you at all times while playing? Well, luckily not, but that's because it succeeds at rejuvenating the mechanics of these classic RPGs for a potential new audience rather than simply bringing them back as they were. But let's take a look. Scald opens on a ship in the middle of a fiery storm. You're awakened and go through a quick tutorial, since you'll have to immediately take care of a riot on board between the sailors and the mercenaries that you've hired. So which side will you take? While this choice won't have huge repercussions, this is a good way for Scald of easing you into the overall gameplay and how each choice will shape quests and different events in the future. In this case you might be attacked later by other characters or perhaps be helped. After this scene you go through a flashback, which explains how you got on the ship and what your mission is. In the tradition of classic RPGs, we have real-time movement on the map, along with turn-based combat. Luckily Skull doesn't follow in the steps of the computer RPGs of yore, but rather keeps a third-person perspective all the way. Moving around can be performed with both keyboard and mouse, and it works pretty well, as you will be resource hunting and scavenging pretty much at all times when you are exploring areas. Indeed, your party needs to be kept fed, which is the main way to restore health while camping, and anything that might be edible, well, better pick it up. The narrative keeps things strictly on a sort of eldritch, horror vibe with creepy Lovecraftian vibes in abundance. Right from the first attack on the ship, and later events taking place on the island, you will be cast down in horrors described in accurate and frightening detail. Especially of note are the two ghost children, whose mother asks you to go down the well and check if they are okay. And, well, let's just say they are a little bit past the point of being okay. While there will be plenty of subquests to pick up, they all feel pretty natural and follow quite a sensible order as well. As mentioned, the combat is turn-based. You will get to perform most of the actions you would expect from an RPG of this ilk. Spellcasting, backstabbing, long-range weapons, and so on. It all works as it should, along with some crunchy sound effects when critical hits are performed. It does feel a bit too cumbersome to maneuver at times, in fact I could never really figure out how to get behind an enemy to perform a backstab in an efficient manner. It seems that most of the times backstabbing just happened, I don't know, whenever it felt like it. It seems to be more of an interface or control issue than a gameplay one, but anyway, it's minor, overall combat feels satisfying and smooth. The game is not very long, and this is a choice I can get behind as it does not try to do too much with a limited but sensible narrative framework. You have to find a missing person on a cursed island, and yes, that's the main thing. It does lay the foundation for future things to come in the universe, so in that way it works perfectly. Also, cannot ignore that beautiful pixel art, which does wonders in bringing to life the characters, and especially the monsters, of Skald. Also, an atmospheric synth wavy soundtrack, which complements the action as well, while not falling to the usual 8-bit sound chip framework, which we have definitely heard enough of. The only issues I would have with Skald at the moment is with the pacing, which is why I held from giving it a much higher rating. It does feel that combat gets in the way of the narrative and the pacing more often than actually being, you know, a positive thing. This is not an issue about random fights, because these are only present on the main map and you can also decide to flee. Also enemies stay dead while in the areas, so again that's not a problem. It's all about how combat feels in the overall pacing and narrative. Most of the time you cannot avoid fights, everywhere and everything you do there's probably combat somewhere waiting for you. Exploring is how you solve quests, anyway, and how you progress in the story, so you are expected to run into enemies again and again. Of course, this does, you know, come into the whole paying homage to the 80s classics, so everyone who played these games should feel right at home. Still, personally, I would have minded if Skull was a little bit more flexible on the combat front. But overall, again, there is very little to complain, as I felt like I was thrown back in my first days of playing a classic RPG with an exquisite narrative and disquieting and great pixel art. And not having to keep a logbook at hand, well, that's great too. Skull feels like it takes all the right inspirations from the past, while also doing its own thing and caring about its universe and story. I award Skull 8.5 out of 10. This is a ship that goes back to the past and will make us enjoy all kinds of strange and horrifying things along its journey. 
Satisfying combat, well written narrative, great soundtrack and pixel art, Scald might really be one of the best ways that you want to feel nostalgic about the early 90s and late 80s. Do not skip out on it.